Good evening and welcome to the second series of Free Media, Free Minds, Cape Town TV's show where we look at the free flow of information in society. We know that knowledge is power and in this show we're going to spend the next 13 weeks looking at what are some of the obstacles that stop information in our society and what are some of the things we can do in Cape Town to get the information to flow. Tonight we're going to be looking at the question of women and the media. Now, women are 50% of our population, but if you go to the news, they are just 24% of sources that get interviewed. We often see stereotypes of women portrayed as the caregivers, as sex workers, as victims, beauty queens. But where are the powerful women that we know take, uh, are shaping our communities? Where are they in the media? Joining me in the studio to discuss this, I have Mersha Andrews, a leader in the Democratic Left Front. Hi, Mersha. Hi. Uh, Busim Tabane, who is a senior producer and journalist at Bush Radio. Hi, Busi. Mm -hmm. And Judith Smith from the uh, Gender and Me uh, Southern African Media and Gender Institute. Welcome, Hi. Judith. Thank you. Uh, before we get the discussion started, we're going to take a look at a quick insert uh, produced by Gertrude Pitswani uh, with Women's Net. It's a digital story, and you'll be amazed at the low tech uh, nature of the story, but how powerful it is in really conveying its message. Let's take a look at this. I boldly speak what's on my mind. I wasn't always like this but life has its own ways of leading us into our destinies. I grew up in the dusty streets of a high-density suburb in Zimbabwe. I was bullied at school and I was silenced at home because I was a girl and the last born child. To fix my problem, I became a tall boy. This gave me the chance to explore the little pleasures that men enjoyed. As I was growing up, I noticed that men misrepresented, underrepresented, and suppressed women's voices. It made me sad to see women living in bondage. I was troubled with the type of stories that I heard on radio and television. I was restless when I was unable to use information and communication technologies. This steered my desire to want to own, use, and control the media. My first encounter with the computer was at the age of 20. I had enrolled at university to study communication. I wasn't just doing this for myself, but I was also doing this for my mother, who, like me, had never used a computer, who, like many other women in my community, could not tell their own stories. Like a sponge, I absorbed all the information that I could to prepare me for my future. The more I learned, the greater my hunger for information grew. My thirst to know how to own, control, and use technology to change women's lives could not be quenched. Then, suddenly, my mother died. My world crumbled and my heart was shredded. Death had robbed me of my dear mother. As I grieved, the desire to empower women with knowledge to use information and communication technologies to their advantages grew even more. I had failed to impart knowledge to my mother because death had denied me the chance to do so. This was the beginning of my community initiative. I converted a veranda into a computer lab to train women and girls to use information and communication technologies free of charge. Using two computers, I began training 30 women and 30 girls. Within a few weeks, the figure had increased to 98 as husbands, sons, and relatives followed women to the computer lab. This made me realize that women were the link to all developmental programs 
and empowering them was the first step to bring in positive change to communities. Older women and girls in my community now call me mother. They say I am nurturing them like they were my own children. This reminds me of my mother who found joy in sharing the little that she had with the many who had nothing. I have dedicated my life to empowering disadvantaged persons with information and skills to enable them to boldly speak their minds. I want them to demand their rights, to raise their voices in magnitude, and to use information and communication technologies to activate the untapped potential. Good. Uh, today we're going to be asking the question, does the media promote sexism? And we'd really like to hear from our, our viewers as well. You can SMS your comments to 074-103-6704 or email us freemedia at capetowntv.org. Does the media promote sexism? Uh, Judith, looking at the insert, should we be concerned about how the media represents uh, women and men in our society? Oh, definitely. It's really important that the media accurately reflects the equality we are striving for in this country in terms of sex and gender, um, when it reinforces stereotypes and portray a male-only society that will continue and then promotes the sexism that does um, exist. Yeah. Pussy, Looking at the mainstream media, the dominant kind of com big commercial media, what are the issues that they tend to emphasize when it comes to women? And what are some of the issues that they tend to uh, downplay? It's mostly beauty products. They would um, talk about beauty products like you'll find there's an expert from L'Oreal who's here to talk about how to get your eyes uh, nice and bright. Um, they will also have household um, things, like y there will be a show, maybe it's like a 30-minute a, a um, show. This particular show is brought to you by OMO. Um, it's not about um, issues like economic, uh, uh, economics or uh, politics, uh, but it's mostly things that got nothing to do with the growth. Sure. I was very surprised to read that a 2007 study that says that 42% uh, of women were in cabinet at the time, 32% in parliament. But when it comes to politics, it's only 8% of the voices that are women. I mean, Marcia, do women have nothing to say about politics? Well, I, I, I think um, women have a lot to say. Women um, say it every day in different organizations and so on. But to take uh, the point that Bussian is making, it's also important that women are seen to be consumers. So when they want to sell products, when they want to influence buying patterns and so on, it is then that women are targeted. It's then that uh, particularly beauty, all kinds of consumer products actually. So women are seen, if you just see them as, as consumers of, of products, we are simply seen as brainless, people who just... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a stereotypical idea that women are the buyers. We'll go to the shops, etc. I think that's one issue. The second part of it is also when they do speak to women, it's mainly middle class women or it's a particular level of elites that's spoken to. It's not ordinary women. It's not poor women that's been addressed. Mm. I have a wonderful little story that I think uh, um, goes with the clip that we've just seen. I also work in my everyday life with farm workers and farm dwellers. Mm. 
and there is a, a farm worker who says to me, do you know um, the picture of the farm that I work on? Very quickly, yeah. Yeah, the picture of the farm that I work on is a beautiful picture of the farmer and the dog and the apples and trees. They never show us. Mm. But we're the ones making the wine, yeah. producing it, I mean, etc. Bussi, how do you respond? Because a lot of journalists would say, we're just reflecting the world as it is. Is that the case? We do have women economists that you hardly hear about in mainstream media. Um, you do have a political analyst. They never in the media. They should have those people in the mainstream media so that the greater society can know, especially the girl child, to have um, role models to look up to. Mm. We're not just about buying washing machines. We're not about buying L'Oreal. An underlying power relation as well that men yeah. are put forward as the yes. spokespeople. Yes. We're going to take a short break and when we come back we're going to look at what it is that women can really do to take control of the media and get their voices out. We'll <coughs> be back uh, shortly. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenburg. Buy an Indica Vista Ego from $9.99 per month, three year 100,000 Rand kilometer warranty, four years 100,000 Rand kilometer service plan, three years unlimited road assistance, and more. To find out more, SMS the word Tata to 32010, and one of our service consultants will be in touch with you shortly. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get these amazing deals on Evox Sports Nutrition Supplements at Dischem now. Life is all about protein. Buy 2 kilograms of 100% whey protein for only 449.95 and get 500 grams free. Pack on the muscle with formidable mass, only 339 for 4.2 kilograms. Essential for best performance is Evox Rapid Recovery, only 270. Your favorite natural fat burner of choice is Evox CLA for only 229.95. Buy one, get one free. Evox is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. CTV News tells my story about my life in my own voice. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. Uh, this evening we're looking at women in the media and we've been discussing how the dominant, the commercial media really treats women as consumers and, and downplays their voices and doesn't address their issues and concerns. We're now going to look at what are the possibilities for women to take back control of the media, take back control and have the discussion that we need to be having in our communities about the kind of society we want. We're asking the viewers at home to, to join us in the discussion to answer the question, does the media promote sexism? We'd love to hear from you. You can SMS 074-103-6704 or drop us an email, freemedia at capetowntv.org. Uh, we're gonna kick off this discussion with another insert looking at the new women's movement that have uh, begun a very innovative project to give women uh, some control of the media. Let's look at the insert. Can the internet help young women activists across the Cape Flats? This is what the Young Women's Chapter is currently exploring. Guided by the new women's movement and researchers, these young women are being supported to continue to grow as young activists and leaders in their communities. After our um, first democratic government, most of the, the women leaders that was active in fighting apartheid, they left for parliament and they left for government. And we found that there was a vacuum of leadership in civil society that can lead the women's movement. And so we said that we are not going to fall into that same situation. We are going to build leadership. Key to this project 
is showing the young women how information and communications technology, like the internet, can help them engage local government around the challenges facing their communities. In our community as a Power Good Brands, we are mostly concentrating on teenage pregnancy and drug abuse and um, gender violence and um, alcohol abuse. Personally for me, is to, for myself, is to educate and to go out and to go learn, mostly for the young chapter, is to go um, educate the people out there in the communities and learn and teach them more about the skills because I must take the skills first and then I can take it to the community. The internet and smartphones have led to new possibilities such as blogging and social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter. These are examples of what is now known as Information and Communications Technologies or ICTs. ICTs provide a unique and powerful platform for local women's voices to be heard on a global scale. Most of the projects um, in the past 10 years that focus on ICT and development, it focuses more on access. You know, we, we want to give access to computers so poor women and young women must also have access, we must also have computers. But, but we say that that is not enough. Access in itself is not enough to create the change that we want. We say that we want um, this tool to be, to be used as a transformation tool. And so we, we, we specifically look at how can we build in activism um, and um, for the young women to increase the quality of their lives. I think it's so easy to think about ICTs as simply providing access, but it's very important for young people to use ICTs critically and in, in an informed way for them to be able to know that they can have a voice that speaks about their interests and their needs in relation to ICTs. So this project is very much about how young women, young people can claim a space to make ICTs work for them. I mean, we know that ICTs are being used for all sorts of conservative and reactionary reasons, like, for example, promoting pornography, uh, violence against women, and so on. For young women especially, ICTs can be very, very destructive. So this is about how young women can own ICTs. The project is still in its early stages, but already the possibilities that ICT presents are endless. The Young Women's Chapter is now developing a website, blogs and finding ways of using social networks to further their cause and grow their political agency in South Africa. We would like to train the young women to access those information that would most be important and most be relevant to them to further their, their quality of life, to further their cause of young women's power also and to set their place in a new South Africa, not as, um, as tokens, you know, an affirmative action, but to be proud citizens, skilled and powerful and confident next to their male counterparts. Well, we've, we've really witnessed a revolution in the media in the last 20 years from a, from a time when only rich people controlled newspapers and TVs to now we're seeing ordinary working class and poor people having uh, opportunities to make their own media. Uh, Judith, what kind of opportunities, how real are these opportunities for people? Well, firstly, in the mainstream media, very little opportunity exists for women and poor people to take control of the media. We know who controls the media at that level. Policy reinforces that, um, employment equity plans um, and labor uh, transformation plans do not accurately include what should happen on the ground. In terms of Community media, many opportunities exist through internet, radio, blogging, through social media. Um, the voices are made available for people to yeah. take up those spaces. Uh, uh, Pussy Bush Radio is one of uh, the champion of community radio in South Africa, in fact, not mm -hmm. only in Cape Town. Yes. How, how do you take up uh, gender issues and how do you give women voices? Uh, first of all, we are headed by a woman. Our managing director is a woman, uh, but that's not something new. I mean, in Cape Town, um, six community stations are headed by women. Um, so I think uh, having a woman in, in, in that position, it also kind of channels down to the staffing and programming, whereby we would look at how we can use gender as part of our programming. And then that will kind of channel 
to the committee as well. And is gender something that you're conscious when you have your planning meetings? Do you really bear in mind the when you make choices about your topics, your guests? Most definitely. Uh, for instance, when it comes to music, there is a certain music that you wouldn't play, even if a DJ sneaked that track and then played it, the programs manager will run to the window and be like, what is that? Yeah. Um, so from the music that we play, the advertisement that we take into the programming, it is constantly stressed that you need to have the representation. Sure. I mean, Mersha, what are some of the challenges for ordinary working class and poor women? We've, we've almost presented with this panacea that any, anyone at, with an internet access can produce their own media. Well, I think that um, your question is perhaps the, you know, taking control. How can women and the poor take control? They've never had control. And access to the computer, access to internet, even access to using social media is dependent on money. And you also know that in South Africa, um, access to some of these things is virtually impossible. So whilst across Africa, many poor and many women have uh, a cell phone, it doesn't always mean that they can use it because it costs. So I think there's a lot of work and lobbying that must be done to ensure that social activism reaches more prices are reduced, etc. If you just look at the price margins of these media houses, yeah. they make a lot of money. So we must fight on that issue if we yeah. really want access. Judith, isn't the question of organization also important? You don't make media alone, you make it in a collective. Oh, absolutely, and through our Women's Media Watch um, program, we use community members to develop and, and produce media, whether it is print, um, television, um, internet, radio, particularly we use a lot. So it's, it's all around organization and how we harness the, the, the resources that we have to produce and, and give spaces for those voices. And, and what are women's issues? What are the things that we would expect to be hearing more about if there was more gender justice in our media? Marcia? I think the, um, I w uh, Pussy was making the point that there's lots of women uh, yeah, at, at this uh, television station, also producers are women and so on. But I think it also requires a women's analysis. So if you look at the housing question, housing is a very big issue for poor people in this country. Mm. But it's much more important for women. It's the issue of, of access, it's about privacy, it's about violence. So how to bring women's specificities into yeah. the questions I think is key. And that often is missing. Yeah. I think the, the bottom line is every issue is a woman's issue. Yes. And if we're committed to the free flow of information, we must be committed to women's voices being loud on every issue. Exactly. Uh, I want to thank my guests for your time. We've been watching Free Media, Free Minds, brought to you on Cape Town TV with support of the Alternative Information Development Center and Friedrich Ebert Stichtung. Uh, you can catch us every Thursday at 9 p.m., a repeat at 7 p.m. And uh, until we meet again next week, let's let the information flow. Let's become active consumers of media, not taking things at their face value, but let's also bring our voices forward and start producing media where we can. Good night. <laughs>